As Hurricane Ian moved through southwest Florida, it completely destroyed the Sanibel Causeway, the only bridge to the island from Fort Myers. Half of it still sits underwater while the other half collapsed. Residents had not, be able to, had not been able to access their homes. Yeah, James, that is until yesterday and what an emotional scene it was. This was the first time that they've been able to go back to their homes in more than a week. Uh, they were allowed on the island to view the place that they used to call home. CNN's Randy Kay made the trip with some of them to see the damage. It's 7 a.m. and Julie Emig and Vicki Pascali are on a boat for Sanibel Island. This will be the first time seeing their home up close since Hurricane Ian swept through here, and they have no idea what to expect. How do you feel about coming here today? Very apprehensive. Um, I almost don't want to know. I'm, I'm afraid of what we're going to see. This time, it's not going to be the same. Our island has been changed. We made our way from the mainland across the Gulf of Mexico because the one road in was destroyed. Can you see where the causeway used to be? What, what did you think? Troubling. Troubling to know that Mother Nature is that powerful. With the island cut off, Julie and Vicki had to hire a private boat to take them to Sanibel. Water. Captain Brandon Lawson was at the wheel for the hour-long journey. Looks like there's an opening right here. As we edged closer to Sanibel, now just a couple miles out, the destruction left in Ian's path became clear. It just it's gone. Our beach is gone. Once off the boat, it's around a mile on foot to their home. What they see is overwhelming. We live down this way. This beautiful street that's been forever changed. Oh my God, their house is gone. Total devastation. Totally changed. It's just heartbreaking to see this. Unbelievable. They're closer to their house now, but still unsure what they'll find until they make the turn around the bend. I think I see the back of our house. Remarkably, their house is still standing. There's all kinds of stuff that doesn't even belong to them in their backyard. We found these. These are somebody else's camera negatives, certainly not theirs. And then also in the backyard, this bag of birthday cards for someone's 60th birthday certainly not their name on it and not their collection of cards. And look at this. This is what's left of a door from a women's restroom from a clubhouse at a resort that is blocks and blocks away from here. How do you ever start with this? With the power out, it took about an hour to get the hurricane shutters opened manually. Upstairs is, we're good here, dry. But on their lower level, Hurricane Ian had left his mark. In the garage, the floors were slick with mud and sludge, and the smell was unbearable. We were wondering how high the water got. Well, this tells us the story. Right here, this tells us the story. So, a little over five little, feet. About six feet of water in here. And their mini Cooper, which they left behind when they evacuated, full of water and mold. All of this just beginning to sink in. I know. And in their lower level apartment, the force of the water destroyed the kitchen. The island flipped on its side, and the refrigerator yanked out of the wall and left to rest on top of the kitchen counter. This was our dream home. Sanibel provided it to us for two years. It was wonderful. Until Ian took it away. Until Ian took it away. Our hearts are with all of those folks as they go back and try to put together what they used to call home.